Thank you, guys. Thank you, Alex, for that warm welcome. Um, and thank you to Alex and uh, Dr. Castro. I don't feel like I can first name somebody with, a, with an actual title like, do like doctor, so we'll, we'll go with a full name. Um, I think that was a, a wonderful um, a framing. And Alex, thank you again for joining us at short notice. I think it's incredible that EasyJet managed to get you here uh, on time, as expected, this morning. Um, so as Alex was introducing, we've got um, four leading minds um, in the agency landscape to here to talk to you about attention. Um, we'll start with uh, some quick introductions. Don't worry, I won't do it for them. Um, but I will introduce myself first of all. My name is James. I'm the uh, Managing Director for Outbrain in Northern Europe. And beside me, I have Stephanie. I'm, I'm Stephanie. I'm uh, Global Data Analytics Director for Essence Medigum for one of our biggest CPG clients. Uh, hi, uh, my name is James. I head up um, Business Intelligence for uh, Zenith Globally. Hi, my name's Vicky. Uh, I'm one of the uh, planning partners at Seven Starts. I'm Andrew. When I signed up for this, I was head of digital planning at uh, Wavemaker, and I'm day four into a new job at a tech company. We didn't cause that change, hopefully. We, we that agreed was, that, this. Wasn't, yeah. that wasn't on us. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Um, and as, as Alex said, the, the idea of this panel is, is somewhat different. Um, I think the topic of, of attention underneath the broader topic of marketing effectiveness um, uh, holds a lot of questions for a lot of people in, in the room. Otherwise, we wouldn't get close to 200 people to, to turn up and listen to us talk about it. So rather than, than do a discourse of just Q&A, this panel's decide, is, aim is to be more question than, than answer. So we've asked uh, the panel here to come up with the, what are their questions about attention? What are the things that are troubling them from their point of view when they're planning for their clients, um, when they're executing media, or even if they're thinking, thinking about bigger topics within their agency? What are the questions that that are going unanswered at the moment, with the hope that those provocations, once we've listened to them, then can be taken on by the other panellists um, in the later sessions and, and answered um, uh, as thought-provoking pieces. So the good news, again, is you're not going to have to listen to me. I will hand you over to the actual experts for, for their provocation. So, Stephanie, why don't we start with you? Sure, thanks. I think there's a lot of talk about attention, not only today, but um, everywhere. And if you want to take somehow the signal from the noise. I think it's super important that we step back and ask ourselves, what is the role of attention and what can it do for me, rather than just implementing it and coming out uh, with some plans that, with, a, with the insight to say, well, that one drove a bit more attention than the other piece, like Gratella already said. So I think that's not how we want to approach it. So it's really about stepping back and asking ourselves, um, why do we spend media? Why do we spend advertising money? And in the end, we'll do that because we want to make sure it delivers an outcome that matters. And for many of the companies, that outcome is sales. And if that's the question, so if that's the point, the next logical question is then, is attention able to drive more, more sales? Um, is it, could it be a proxy for sales? Um, does it even correlate to sales? And to really understand that, you have to have a rigorous testing approach in a way to set up an, an A-B approach where you can then look at both and understand, is my business as usual performing versus attention in regards to sales? So we've started that journey and we've seen pretty good promises so far. But even if we turn the promises into confidence, I think we still have to figure out how to use attention because there's so many use cases within planning, buying, and optimization. If you just stay with an optimization use case, there's still the question about um, how, can it, how can attention make the biggest impact? And within optimization, it's heavily linked to the volatility of the media effect, of the media placement. <coughs> and um, We've seen high opportunities in programmatic. We've seen less so in social. And the uh, reason for that is because the media has just been used differently, which creates the volatility. And um, even if you then go for that high opportunity, <coughs> within that, right, so you, there are different ways how to apply it. So you can go via PMPs, you can do manual optimizations, powered by dashboards on the live campaigns. You can even create bidding algorithms that are fueled with attention. And all of this then, depending on what you go for, it comes with a cost. It comes with the cost of the technology, it comes with the cost for media, it comes for also with the cost for people and personal and resources, specifically if you go for that manual process, which then layers an efficiency aspect into that whole effectiveness point I made a bit earlier. So the big question for me is, 
not only can attention drive more sales, but also can it deliver a higher ROI? And I don't think we have all of the answers today, but I think we, I'm happy to follow up. Thank you, Stephanie. So I think that summarizing that, is attention worth a squeeze? Is it really, really worth it? Thank you. James? Yeah, cool. Um, so, I mean, um, as you can see <laughs> from my title, I've got a strategy background as well as being uh, our head of business intelligence. Um, and the way that I would approach this is kind of from a macro perspective, which is you know, certainly within the business intelligence role, we can link attention as being an important metric to immediate sales. Uh, and in fact, we've got a, a, a tool called RightReach that, that does that for, for different categories. <coughs> Um, I think if this is going to be a metric that sticks for the long term, though, uh, we need to start to appreciate um, how it can be involved in brand building or kind of further up the consumer journey um, for where there's less research. Um, and from my perspective, I think there's kind of two elements to this. So if you look at it through the lens of trying to create a single experience for the customer uh, across the whole journey, but then at each stage of that journey, what you'll see is that different facets of marketing will be involved in different parts of that process. And each of them needs to know, you know how much time needs to be spent with their advertising uh, in order to achieve the goal of shifting people from one part of the consumer journey through to the next part of that consumer journey. And then the other thing I think about is, it's not just uh, from a paid perspective, and I think a lot of the research that's in place at the moment is around paid media channels, whereas actually from an owned and earned perspective, these are, you know, kind of post cost of living crisis, increasingly important channels, because if you promise something in paid, but that experience isn't driven through, or people don't have the right kind of experience, or haven't spent enough time with your brand outside of your paid channels, you're not going to drive, you know, the equity, the retention that you're looking for. So I feel like, uh, from my perspective, there are two different elements here. One is a better understanding of um, how attention is important purposively in terms of the actions that it generates from the consumer, and those will be different depending on which part of the consumer journey they're at. Um, and that makes a big impact in terms of uh, buying efficiency as well as effectiveness in terms of, for example, at the moment, you might look at uh, media planning based on, you know, how much does it cost to buy a channel? What reach does that channel have? What kind of attention does that channel have? But if you're a small brand, you're probably going to be focused much more on driving awareness. And if you're a big brand, it's probably more consideration, kind of purchase, post-purchase. Um, my uh, assumption or hypothesis would be the amount of attention in terms of time spent with advertising, um, and I think eye tracking is probably the best way of measuring that, will be different for those two things. So you know, when you kind of pump that through the overarching machine that gets you to your media plan, you'll come up with a very different media plan depending on what stage of the consumer journey your focal effort is, depending on the size of your brand. Um, so we're starting to do some initial research with Lumen on that. It's one category, um, it's versus an existing piece of, or I should say, <laughs> massive database of research that we have called Touchpoints, uh, which is uh, a paid owned um, norms database based on survey data. We're starting to try and apply attention data to that because we can cut it down by journey stage and understand, you know, in terms of the amount of seconds needed, depending on the consumer journey task, what, what's the difference and what are the right channels? And I think at the moment, it's very much a kind of overarching metric. And to a certain extent, I don't want to say a buzz metric, but something we know has a really strong short-term impact on business. But when we're starting to brand build, I think that's when a lot of that research falls away. Um, so I, I'm, I'm finishing. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's a super interesting topic. <laughs> no, one, you could obviously talk about all, all, all afternoon, but yeah. we, we need um, to try and get some answers. So, so my provocation would be, um, do we have enough research on what's happening in the space of, A, understanding <coughs> the amount of attention in terms of time spent, actual time spent looking at advertising required to push someone from one stage to the next, and B, do we have enough research in terms of the fact that that will probably be a collaboration between paid owned and owned channels and different facets of the marketing team rather than um, the current paid perspective that I feel like a lot of the research is weighted towards? Sorry. Amazing. No, that's, no, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> Vicky. Yeah, so um, being part of the planning team, uh, I thought that I would look at attention in relation uh, to overarching media plans and channel strategy um, and what effectiveness that therefore drives for our clients' business. And I think the, the reality is that attention is only adding value when we see a response from it. 
Uh, there's a lot of conversation around attention and measuring attention, but if that's not meaning f turning into sort of meaningful actions uh, and responses from our, our clients' consumers, then it, it's not really kind of making any, any change. Um, so with any sort of comms planner, and it's critical for a planning role, we need to make sure that we're setting the KPIs right. And the reality is that those are going to be different depending on where you are in the consumer journey. Um, and that's no different for attention metrics. So, you know, if you think about um, awareness, you might do sort of eye tracking or hover rate. Uh, if you're going into the consideration phase, uh, you might be looking more at sort of social conversations or, or dwell time. Um, but really, the, the, the challenge there comes that when you look at KPIs so granularly, uh, the reality is you, you forget about that bigger picture. And that's really kind of the critical role of the planner to understand exactly what that, that, what's happening in that, in that bigger picture. Uh, and, and often, sometimes, that can sway our media channel selection. So if I take cinema, for example, it's a, a really immersive environment. Um, obviously, the attention in that environment is, is great. But the relative CPTs and the entry-level costs that clients would have to pay to get into that channel uh, mean that actually it's, it's just not feasible. So we need to think about how attention could be swaying that upfront sort of channel, uh, channel decisions uh, in what we're doing. Um, so for me, really, it's a, it's a balancing act when we come to doing that planning work, uh, thinking about exactly uh, where attention comes into that journey. Um, and really, we need to think about attention is just part of the effectiveness conversation. We can take people there and make them aware of it, but if they don't retain that information, it's kind of meaningless. So the correlation between attention and memory retention is also going to be critical going forwards. Amazing. So not losing sight of the, the wider goal by, by focusing too narrowly on, on one aspect. Exactly that. Thank you. Cool. Andrew. Oh uh, yeah, you can't see the, the aggressive timer that I've got <laughs> down here. It's like mother in law's eyes at a wedding speech. But um, this Sorry by the way, I think that's on me. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely on you. Um, the um, there's two halves to, to what we're talking about, right? In attention. There's like the philosophy side of this thing, which is what is the value of the attention just what you were talking about there. So not all attention is, is equal. So I've worked with Steffi for a long time. I love Steffi very much. And so say I was going to buy you a, a luxury bag, you know, the same bag uh, in two places, <laughs> made in the same sweatshop, you know. I've got one. I show it to you in, in Splot Market in Cardiff and I, for the same amount of time. And then I take one, take you down Bond Street and show you the same bag for the same amount of time. You'll have a different impact, right? So not all attention is equal. And so the impact that attention has is something that we, we should be considering. And then on the other side of things, we've got the metrics, which is why we're all here. They've got these new partners who can suddenly um, gamify all these different digital metrics like Adelaide and um, Playground and uh, Firefly and all these great partners. And, you know, speaking to IS, they do, they, they kind of laugh and find it a bit cringe because what all they're doing is, is gamifying measures we've always had. We've always had clash, we've always had cluster, we've always had viewability, we've always had time in view. And so creating this black box measure and then uh, a score is actually a little bit cringe and it's a little bit digital. It's, a, it's the new click-through rate in that, in that respect. It's trying to create, it's gone down to naught, so I'll, I'll finish in a sec. Um, it's, it's trying to create a thing where we're sort of conflating efficiency and effectiveness and it, 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 it's kind of embarrassing for digital practitioners to jump on it like this. Um, so my, my provocation, I think, is like we need to stop being so digital about it and think about it in the short, medium and long term. There's some brilliant work. Out. I know we've seen System 1 with Orlando and Sorin at Mars is doing amazing work. There's brilliant work out there and it's different for every client and that's the way we need to think about it. Not attention is good. Because if attention is good, I'll just go and buy mobile interstitials, but no one will buy anything. No, thank you, Andrew. I think that's, that's, that's a great way of, of finishing it because it's a provocation that hopefully the guys up next will, will be able to tackle um, head on. But um, I just want to take, we, we are out of time, as, as, as Andrew says, but I wanted to just take a moment to thank you, all of the panellists for, for taking part and giving your input, your questions and, and your provocation. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank no you. worries at all. Thank you. <laughs> so now we've set the table for the three most powerful attention measurement platforms to come on stage and, and answer some of these questions. Um, I'd like everybody to please stand up. Please, can we have a, a standing ovation for Tan, Alex, and, and Mark. Up you come, guys. <laughs>